Hey, hey, welcome into the Big Ten Huddle. I'm your host, JR, and we've got a lot to talk about going on in the Big Ten. It's a Sunday night episode, so you know we have Kent, casual Big Ten here. And then also with us, we have Lee from Turtleheads. Uh, it's just Turtleheads, right, Lee? It's not Turtleheads talk like it is on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you, you can call us whatever you want. All right, so Turtle Heads, uh, go check them out. They're the Maryland podcast for Big Banter Sports. Uh, Kent, I promise you that if uh, you slightly shove me on the court, I will not have my entire bench go after you and have security guards go onto the court to come after you. <laughs> did you see that today? So that's what I'm glad that you brought that up right <laughs> off the bat. I did not see that. I was traveling today. We talked about this right before we started recording, but I was traveling today. I only got to watch one of these games. So I'm going to kind of play like, I'm I'm kind of in the live chat and I'm going to play like I'm learning as we're going through with what happened in these games, um, you know, throughout the day. I don't even know what you're talking about right now, but please don't please don't push me, though. Don't do that. It was the uh, the LSU South Carolina game. There was oh. like an all out brawl and the a brawl and the entire bench of each team got uh, ejected. So it was literally for the rest of the game, five on five. <laughs> yes, yeah. so, that's actually yeah. awesome, though. <laughs> It kind of is. I almost posted under the uh, ESPN thing. I was like, man, women's basketball goes so hard. <laughs> you would never <laughs> see that in, in men's basketball. Uh, but, yeah, I decided not to. So I just said it on a podcast instead. Um, all right. We have Dylan here with us. And uh, he says the champs are here. Yes, Dylan. Uh, everybody is very happy for you. Uh, and, and, and you get to gloat. So welcome to your uh, gloating session here. I don't know chat. about I don't know about everybody, Dylan, but I'll concede for right now. <laughs> Lee, Lee is putting on a good a good face, so we'll say that. <laughs> yeah, we buried uh, our yeah, hatchet. Oh, so there you go, uh, Dave. Here, Dave Turtlehead. I mean, <laughs> TMI, Dave. TMI, but glad you're with us. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, so we got a lot of games to talk about. We have Illinois and Iowa right off the bat. That game is still going on. However, I think that we can discuss it at least a little bit. I'll uh, go ahead and edit the graphic and everything when it comes to it. Uh, but we have often daunted here. Thoughts on Indiana's senior night. <laughs> a few tour despite the latest venom surrounding the program. Yeah, so uh, you guys want to talk about this for just one second before we get into some of the games, uh, the the senior night and everything that was going on at IU. Uh, obviously, Mike Woodson is in some hot water there with Liam. Uh, was it Nelson? Nielsen? I think it's Nelson. Yeah, uh, Liam, he, 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 Liam Neeson, the guy from uh, Taken. Is he yeah. in trouble with him because then he's in big trouble. Yeah, because he, yeah, he will find lot. him. He will find Mike Woodson and he will kill him. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you guys have any thoughts on just the uh, the uh, Indiana program right now with everybody going crazy? I mean, Indiana might make the tournament. It's it's honestly still a possibility at this point. So to think that Mike Woodson like could lose his entire team a year after making the tournament, like I mean, that's the rumor is like everybody but Gabe Caps is is getting ready to leave, and it's like if you had to have anybody stay, do you want Gabe Caps to stay? I don't. Know. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Trey uh, Galloway said he's coming back for another year. Um, I guess they did their senior night ceremony after the game, and he said he's coming back for a fifth year. So they at least have Gabe Cups and uh, Trey Galloway. But I'm not sure that's what, really what you want to build your team around. <laughs> but is he coming back to IU? That's what he said. He said that four okay. years have been great, and he's not ready to, not ready to uh, I guess, leave yet. So I took it as he was coming back. And, and one thing we've learned about these players is like once they say something that is like in stone, that's for sure going to right. happen. So if he's coming back to Indiana, <laughs> like if he said that, he's for sure coming back to Indiana. Um, I only heard about the uh, the references to Dalton Connect this week that like Mike Woodson didn't know his name on a recruiting visit last week. That's what the rumor was that I kept uh, hearing on Twitter. Is that true? That cannot be true. I hope it's not true. I would I would tend to believe that if you are incompetent enough to not know the name of the recruit that you're going to, then you would like you would win less games than Jawan Howard. Like I think Jawan Howard at least knows the <laughs> names of the recruits. So to mm. me that you are winning 
twice as many games as Juwan Howard has won, and you don't know the names of the recruits, like that's impressive. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Totally. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out which comment from Often Daunted to share. I'm treating mid major conference tournament like. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're getting our team who needs freshmen exactly right just go into the portal and find some people there uh fisherman says howard forgot his own senior's name in an interview though uh oh that's true yes Juwan howard. <laughs> he did forget one of his seniors names i forgot about that so what's worse we're forgetting a recruit's name on a recruiting visit or forgetting a name of one of your players in an interview that's currently on your team <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't, whatever question you're asking, if Jawan Howard's involved, the answer is he's worse. No matter what the question is, like him, definitely him. He's worse. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. Like this, this has kind of been something that's brewing for me a little bit, but like, like guys, we're like, we're, we're the richest conference in college athletics and we can't afford coaches who know the names of their players and of their recruits. Like, I, I'm not trying to say we need to fire all these coaches, but, like, pay the guys some good money and hope, like, I, make sure they're actually good coaches who know names of their players and of their recruits. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, at a certain point, it's like, you know, you have all this money. You're supposed to be this prestigious conference. Like, hire some good coaches. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's too much to ask. Certainly not. Well, we'll find. I feel. I feel like we'll find out this off season, like what's really going to happen, though, because there's going to be some openings, and there are a ton of coaches out there that are ready to come to the Big Ten. I think. So we'll see, like, who actually takes advantage of the fact that. Well, I say all that, but like, also this week, I've heard that not only is Mike Woodson coming back next year, but so is Juwan Howard. So, like, if both those guys are back. I guess that's two less openings than I thought there was going to be this year. So I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of wild. Both those guys need to, I don't know about Mike Woodson, but definitely Juwan Howard needs to be gone and somebody fresh needs to come in to take over the Michigan program for sure. I was told that Juwan Howard is keeping his job and that, um, <laughs> I can't believe what this is. Uh, <laughs> Phil Martelli is taking the fall. Mm. Yeah. It's yep. his, it's definitely his fault. I yeah, I don't I don't get it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, interesting. I don't get it. So, um, often daunted. It's literally the bare minimum for family here, Kim Jr. Yes, thank you. Um, and yes, fisherman Indiana would have to pay a twelve point six million dollar buyout, I believe. Hey, I think Chris Holtman's was better than was bigger than that. <coughs> and look at what Ohio State got from from their thing. So <laughs> maybe it's worth. Um. All right. So let's go ahead and talk Illinois, Iowa. I'm going to finish this graphic while we're talking about it. But um, Lee, let's start with you. Did you have any thoughts on this game? Illinois, uh, obviously a win in the rematch, 73 to 61. Terrence Shannon Jr. comes back from the uh, the bit of a stinker game he had against Purdue. Shows everybody that uh, he is in fact one of the best wings in the nation. And Purdue just happened to find him on a night when. He uh, was in some foul trouble. Still, credit Purdue. They, you know, they were able to get that done. But Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, don't question him. He's still very, very good. Your thoughts, Lee? Uh, yeah, I caught a bits and pieces of this. I was between this one and the Maryland game. Uh, Iowa had an abysmal uh, first half. Um, they were down ten, and then they they came back and cut it to I believe it was five or less. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Illinois took their best punch, and then they. Dane Danger had a great couple of uh, uh, back-to-back possessions, and and then it was uh, all she wrote after that. So, I don't know. Iowa's kind of one of those teams you're not really sure what you're going to get on any given night. If they shoot the ball well, they can beat anybody, but they tend not to defend too well. So, um, Illinois, definitely the better team, and I think that, that showed tonight. Do we like Dane Danger? I do, but I don't know if anybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think he's good. I think he, you know, he certainly is nobody's going to push him around down low. He's just a big body and I mean, I think he's capable of being pretty good, but I don't think he's ever going to be like a premier big man in the Big 10 and definitely not in the country. 
No, I mean, he's definitely never going to be Kofi Coburn or anything like that. Like, he, 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 that's not what you want him to be. But, like, I, mean, I just – I feel like every single time he gets on the floor, he he's scoring points, making things happen on offense, and he's a good piece for Terrence Shannon Jr., Coleman Hawkins. And he allows Coleman Hawkins to not have to, you know, play down low the entire time and kind of spread things out, uh, which, you know, obviously is good for Hawkins. And Hawkins also doesn't have to be in, so it gives him a rest. So, uh, I don't know. Kent, what were your thoughts? Yeah, like Dane Danger is like investing in cryptocurrency. Like it might like one day it might be like really paying off for you, but then the next day it's like, man, I just lost all my money putting this guy in the game. I don't know what I was doing. So uh, that's how I feel about him. I didn't watch this game. Like I said, I was traveling today. So a lot of these games I'm going to be learning as you guys are talking about it. But um, yeah, Illinois, I, I, I did watch the first five minutes of this of this particular one just to get a score update. And the few possessions that I did see, it just feels like Illinois always has something to prove. Like they're playing mad. I tweeted that out. Like they are, um, you know, like they're, they're always trying to prove to everybody that they're a legitimate team and they're going to be able to win something this year. And it feels like they're clicking at the right time. I don't know. Am I getting the wrong vibe from this team? Do you guys feel like that too? Like going into March, this team might be able to actually – actually make a little bit of a run this year. I'm starting to believe in the fighting Illini a little bit. Are you guys with me on this? What do you think, Lee? I, I think they could probably be an Elite Eight team, and I could see them losing in the round of 32. Like, I don't know. Like you said, it's. I think they're as capable as any team to make a run, but if they don't have a good night, if Tanner Shannon doesn't play well, I, I, they might lose to a, a double-digit seed as well. I don't know. <laughs> I think if if – Illinois gets to play their game. They're a final four team. Like mm -hmm. if they are able to play their, I think that was what happened against Purdue is Purdue got to play their game and they dictated that and that hindered Illinois. But if Illinois can go out and run and play the fast break and get Terrence Shannon Jr. downhill the entire game, then yeah, Illinois can beat anybody in the country and get to the final four. Uh, and I, I always say once it gets to the final four, it's just kind of a crapshoot from there. Whatever happens, happens, you know, great accomplishment. If you win it all, awesome. If not, you know, I, I just kind of, it is what it is, but. It is um, funny though. Like I feel like they're built a little bit like a mid major team, but they have high level talent on their team because like what you were just saying, like a lot of the mid major teams, like I think about a team like Samford, for example, which you guys talked about uh, on Wednesday, I believe it was on the uh, bracketology show. They yeah. shoot a ton of threes, and like if they're making them, they're going to win a game. And I feel like that's kind of how Illinois is. If they're hot, they're going to win, but they're not going to be able to get stops. But they also have the, uh, you know, they have the Big Ten talent to be able to match up with anybody in the tournament. But they still have to be hot on offense to be able to win a game. Otherwise, they could, like Lee was saying, lose in the in the first weekend. So it's just funny how they kind of built a team like that to uh, be kind of like an anti-Big Ten team just a little bit. Like, they're not just going to, like, try to put it down on the block and, like, play a ton of defense. They're, like, the exact opposite of that. And that's kind of a fun team for me to, like, go into March to cheer for, I think. Well, it's, like, kind of refreshing, too. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I love that Big Ten basketball has an old-school aspect of post-play to it. And, you know, I feel like that's an ask, you know, how, you know, basketball should be played in some ways. But at a certain point, like it does get very tiring of how, you know, how that game is played. And Illinois is a refreshing. I mean, they they can switch on almost every player one through five. Uh, yeah. Coleman Hawkins, he can he can I mean, he can guard one through five. Now, can he guard one through five the same way all all across the board? No. You know, do I think Coleman Hawkins is the best guy to guard Zach Eady? No, because I think if he's not trying to foul him, then he's giving up a bucket. And I don't think you want to get Coleman Hawkins in foul trouble because, you know, Zach Eady is just that much bigger than him, which, you know, Coleman Hawkins can't, you know, um, uh, control that. But no, I agree. I think that they they play kind of an NBA style where they're, they're all kind of able to switch. They're all kind of long. They're all kind of lanky. I mean, Ty Rogers is what the shortest guy out there and he's like six, six or something like that or six, five. I don't have his height memorized, but uh, no, I, I, I think this Illinois team is refreshing to watch and I, I could watch him with or without Terrence Shan jr. I don't know. That's part of me kind of like them watch him more without Terrence <laughs> Shan jr. I don't know if that's just like nostalgia at this point, but <laughs> there was an aspect to it. I did like, what do you think Lee? Yeah, no, I agree. Like you said, they're, they're kind of that one team that's going to how college basketball is kind of evolving 
um, you know, and how the NBA is one through five. Everybody can shoot from the outside, which makes obviously they spread the floor, which gives everybody a, a, a lot easier uh, chances to drive to the bucket. Um, so, yeah, like you said, I, but to your point about guarding Zach Eady, I don't know if there's really anybody built to really guard Zach Eady at, at a high, you know, do it well for an extended period of time. So, um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, they're a final four team if they play well and get out in transition, but if they're not hitting their shots, then round of 32 potentially. So. Um, so Iowa is right there on the bubble. We were talking bracketology with, um, with, uh, oh, what I can't remember his name, Jason. I almost said James. I was like, it's not James. We we're talking bracketology with James, or just said James, Jason last episode <laughs> on Wednesday night. And he was telling us that losing this game didn't really matter for Iowa. Yes, it was at home and you'd like to win it and that would help them, but it's not going to knock them out of the tournament to lose to, you know, a top 15 team in the nation uh this last game of the season kind of what they need to do is they need to win at least one game in the big 10 tournament to to make them comfortable but if they do make it to the ncaa tournament ken are you confident this iowa team can win a game maybe two and uh, find themselves in the sweet 16 at the very least no i'm not confident in that at all because of what they've shown this year they they're just too uh touch and go and like they've they're not like Nebraska or anything where they're going to win a ton of games at home, but they just have, they've lost too many games to teams that they, for example, just one example to point out, we talked about Jawan Howard already. They lost to Michigan at home. So I have, I have, after that happened, I have zero confidence in them beating anybody at a neutral site in an NCAA tournament game. Even though Tony Perkins is my favorite player. Um, I would, I have to see something uh pretty significant this next week at the Big Ten tournament for me to have any sort of confidence in this team. What do you what about you, Lee? Yeah, I think Kent's exactly right. I don't I don't feel that though if they make it in, they might win a game, but I don't think they're the type of team that's gonna make a, a deep run. They're maybe a first weekend team at best. So that goes back to is Fran McCaffrey a good coach? Because we had the discussion about, like, you don't know a team's name and stuff like that, yada, yada. And that's kind of embarrassing. But, like, at the end of the day, like, most winningest coach in Iowa history, obviously, like, you know, people love him there and stuff like that. And I'm not trying to say people shouldn't. However, like, if he's constantly building teams that can make the tournament but don't really do all that much in the tournament, I mean, they've never gone on an Elite Eight run or anything like that, that I, at least not recently, that I can recall. Um, I mean, is Fran like it would Iowa be better if Fran decided this was his last year? Kent, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think they would be because well, it depends on what you want though out of your basketball program. Like, yeah. do you want like a really buttoned up program that's going to go out and win you fifteen to twenty games a year? Maybe make the NCAA tournament and get put out the first weekend because I I could be wrong, but they have one of the longest. Sweet 16 droughts in the Big Ten. Not only just like making an Elite Eight, don't even talk about that. Like they can't even get past the first weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they have one of those longest droughts in the Big Ten as well. I was just getting ready to look that up. But if you like a team that, you know, is going to run a clean program and get you those 15 to 20 wins every year, maybe make the tournament and, uh, you know, all the players are going to be happy and it's going to be like a family, then that's fine. If you want to go make a Final Four run, then he's not the guy. He's, I mean, at this point, he's proven it. So I would say that they would be better off. For me personally, I want my teams to be able to have a chance to make it to a national championship and make a Final Four run. So I think that they would be better off without it, without him because he's proven it year in, year in and year out that he's not going to be the guy that's going to be able to do that for them. So, yeah, I would get rid of him. But Iowa, like just like football and basketball, I mean, they're just like the same thing. They're just not going to get rid of guys because it's like a family, whatever it is. I don't even know. I don't really get the whole Iowa thing, why they keep coaches forever for no reason. I mean, I would try to get a guy in that can win a little bit more, but that's just me personally. I'm not an Iowa fan, so I can't really can't really speak on why they would keep a guy so long that doesn't win. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, no, I think Kent brought up a great point. I think their fan base seems to be okay with that kind of mediocrity. Hey, we made the tournament every single year, and – you know, we won a game or two in the tournament. And um, like I said, I, I don't know much about Iowa. Like I said, I'm not an Iowa fan. So um, for me, uh, obviously being a Maryland fan, and we haven't been great recently, but 
back in the day, if we weren't making the Sweet 16, that was a that was a terrible year. But I think Iowa's okay with that. Um, at least it seems to be. But Kent brought up a good point. Iowa has a track record of not firing guys for whatever reason. So um, I don't know who you go out and, and get. You know, Iowa's probably not the an area that people are just dying to come play basketball at just because it's Iowa. There's not a whole lot to do there, really. So <laughs> I just looked it up, JR. It was 1999 was their last Sweet 16 appearance. <laughs> the last time they made it past the first weekend was before Y2K happened. So wait, so, has Fran <laughs> McCaffrey ever made the Sweet 16? I think he's, has he, how long has he been here for? I have to look that up. I think he's been there the whole time, hasn't he? I don't I don't have a clue. I, should have done I know he's running out of sons. Sons. Someone in the chat, let us know. How long has he been there for? I know he's running out of sons to, uh, that are eligible to play college basketball. Well, his, so maybe once his sons are finally going, maybe he's done. I don't know. His son is dating Caitlin Clark. Oh, he's only been there since yes. 10. So, yeah, he's never been to the Sweet 16. That's, yeah, that's going to be the insane. real McCaffrey legacy is – if uh, Connor McCaffrey and Caitlin Clark have a basketball player, that'll be the real legacy there. <laughs> so he's around for potentially 20 plus more years is really what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sonny basically. said that he's been there for 14 years in the chat. He said he might be making that yeah. up, which, I, which no, he's been there. To since be fair, Sonny does make up a lot of stuff. So like, he's probably <laughs> lying right there. That's probably major cap right there by Sonny. <laughs> Uh, no, he, he has been there since 2010. I, I thought he's been like longer than that. Maybe I just am getting him mixed oh, up was with right. Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> so yes, Sonny's right. He didn't make that one up, Kent. All right. I'm done talking to Iowa, Illinois. I'm not even going to ask you guys if you have any more thoughts. Let's just move no, on. I'm good. Uh, Wisconsin, Purdue, Wisconsin thought they were all that at the beginning of the year. They are in fact, not all that Wisconsin has the same record as Ohio state. If you would have told me that would have happened at the end of the year, I would have told you were crazy, but, uh, that is the world we are living in that Ohio state fires their coach and they get the same record as Wisconsin, who I legitimately thought how stupid of me that Wisconsin could win the big 10. They are now a five seed in the big 10 tournament, not even sniffing a double buy because, <laughs> Boo Booey and Nebraska's insane ability to win at home is keeping them out. So, uh, Kent, let's go to you first here. Purdue just dominates Wisconsin. Yes, it, it was an eight point game, but Purdue pulled away and there was never really any question. I think when I was watching this game, I never questioned that Purdue was going to win this game. Your thoughts, Kent? I'm just sad because we talked about it so much this year about how this game could like have the Big Ten championship like could yeah. be in balance for this game at the end of the year. This could have been like an all-time great, you know, matchup right here. And then it ended up being like, you know, the one versus the five seed, basically. It didn't matter at all. But, you know, you got to give credit to Purdue because they had absolutely nothing to play for today. They already won the Big Ten. Um, they already had the one seed locked up. They already probably, I mean, I say probably, they already have a one seed locked up in the NCAA tournament as well. So, like, no reason to even go out there and beat Wisconsin, and they do it anyways. So uh, it tells you a lot about that type of team uh, that Purdue is, that they still want to win a game that doesn't really matter to them for the right reasons, and a game that mattered a lot to Wisconsin for the wrong reasons. I mean, they need wins badly. Three wins now, if I'm not mistaken, since it's been February 1st. Insane that this team has just flipped it so much, and I think it goes back. I, every time I hear you talking about uh, Wisconsin on the show, Jr. I can't help but think about something I said a few weeks ago. I feel like everybody just figured them out in the second half of the season. Like every anyone that played them twice, the first time they were like, oh, okay, this guy can do this, this guy can do this. And Greg Gard didn't just, he just didn't make enough adjustments to beat teams in the second half of the Big Ten season. So um, unfortunate that we were kind of fooled by what Wisconsin was at the beginning of the season. And uh, I can't help but think that they're just not as good as what I thought they were two months ago. And it's just unfortunate. But uh, like I said, congrats to Purdue for going out and winning a game that just did not matter to them at all. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the true test of a great team. Can you win games when it does not matter at all? <laughs> I mean, other than senior <laughs> night, I mean, it was senior night, I guess. Right. But no, Purdue. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 But no, I see what you're saying. I, I just I think it's funny to to say that. But uh, yeah. Lee, your thoughts on uh, the the choo choo Boilermakers and Wisconsin? Yeah, no, like 
afterthought. Yeah, yeah, like like Kent said, I think I think this was more of although it didn't really matter. Obviously, it's senior night. Teams want to go out and win, and and Zach Eady played well again. I think he had like 28, 25, and fourteen. Uh, it's down on the bottom of the screen. Um, he's just really unguardable, and and you know when you get it down in there, they've shown that they're capable of making shots from the outside. So um, again, I think they're going to be a really hard team to. Uh, beat not only in the Big Ten tournament, but in the NCAA tournament all around. So, um, and like Kent was saying, I think the last time I was on here, we were talking about, you know, how Wisconsin could potentially be a two seed in the big or the ace or the NCAA tournament, if not a one seed. And they went on an abysmal run down the stretch. So, um, you know, Wisconsin's kind of that team that's not playing well at the right time of the year. And we're going to talk about Ohio State here in a little bit. That's kind of the polar opposite of that. So, um, hats off to Purdue. You know, we've had our, our beef with them, but they got a good basketball team. So they have a really good guy who's seven, four and defies everything with his athleticism to be able to move the way he does, uh, to be as big as he is too. So that, that also helps. Uh, but I'm not trying to put it on him. Obviously Braden Smith, Lance Jones, all those guys too. I thought it was funny. Lance Jones is like final dance or whatever people putting that on. <laughs> <laughs> on uh twitter and everything that was a that was a cool moment and it, it's around this time every year that i just i start getting you know a little sentimental even with guys that aren't on my team where i'm like you know yes this is this is going to be this guy's last time like on that court playing it's it's just crazy to think about and uh you know obviously sad for them but also really cool for them at the same time so um and can't the bxp Godley. Uh, I think the BXP guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say they even retired Edie's jersey after the game today. Um, I saw so a picture. I, 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 I thought so, but uh, they can probably speak to that yeah. better than I can. And the crazy Dylan. part, too, was I don't know if you guys caught this, but like they didn't even get out the ropes or anything. Like Edie just took his jersey off and like hung it up in the Raptors <laughs> after he was yeah. done. Like it was never seen, never seen that happen before. That's pretty wild. He's that tall. He is that tall that he just hung his own like it was still sweating and everything. And he just put it up there and he was like, I'm done, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your time. That's hilarious. Yes, he he uh extended their arm, <laughs> got up there with the how how long his arms are. That's hilarious. Uh yes, Fisherman is putting in the chat that Ohio State is the uh 15. Oh wait, there we go. Uh, Ohio State is the tenth seed in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, we're gonna get to that here in just a minute. We're gonna finish this game and then get into uh, Ohio State Rutgers and talk through all that. But I, I, I don't know, guys. Unless you guys have any thoughts on like Purdue and the NCAA tournament, I, yes, Purdue very good. Wisconsin big disappointment, and like Purdue just has to prove themselves in the NCAA tournament. I think they will. I think that they're at least an Elite Eight team, probably a Final Four team. Uh, I mean, that's what they should be. And at the end of the day, like I am going to be embarrassed for the big 10 if they win it twice in a row and get booted in the round one or round two again. Like, I don't think they're going to get booted in the round one again or in the round two, no. but still like if they only make a sweet 16, like I, I am going to have embarrassment for the entire conference that this team won it twice in a row and they won two games in the, in the NCAA tournament. I have a good question for you guys real quick on Purdue. This doesn't have to go super long, but do you, if you're a Purdue fan, which I know neither of you are, but do you want to lose early next week so you can get rest before the real tournament starts? Or do you want to go through and bang bodies for three nights with Big Ten guys and possibly get bruised up a little bit before you go into the tournament that actually matters? What do you think they want to do? What do you think, Lee? Uh... I mean, personally, if, if it was Maryland in the position they're in, I think I would rather us just go out and continue to play and try to win the Big Ten tournament and and then go in and, you know, at least you kind of keep the momentum going. Um, I wouldn't yeah. want to go out and just not play anybody. Not saying that they would do that, but um, why not go out and try to win a Big Ten tournament to, to go into yeah. the NCAA's top? Like if I had guys who were ouchy and, you know, had maybe some injuries throughout the year, I might consider something like that. I don't think I'd want that to happen as a fan. However, like Purdue is one of the only teams in the nation that has started these 
same five all season long. Um, like I, if I'm a Purdue fan or if I'm like somebody in charge of Purdue, I don't want to mess that up. Like keep the same guys in there, start those guys. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you play ED 28 minutes instead of 32 in a game or something like that. Give them some extra rest. If it looks like the game is going well, but I, I couldn't see myself like auto benching a guy, uh, especially from the starting lineup or anything like that. Just there's too much, too much, uh, momentum and stuff like that on the line. That's just me personally though. So what do you think, Kent? Yeah, I'd want to, I mean, as a fan, I would want to win it because I would want to win everything so that there was no question. But I, I always wonder about the actual players and the coaches, like, cause you know, they're the ones that actually matter when it comes down to these games. Yeah. If they really want to play three more games or if they would just be like, ah, oh, man, let's, let's just get out of here Friday and have, have the weekend to rest and then uh, go into next week and see what we got going on, you know, but um, yeah, as a fan, obviously I think all the fans would like to see them win both. And uh, that's what I would like to see them do too, to prove that they are the best team. Um, I, I personally, I'm one of the people that thinks that the regular season championship means more um, than the big 10 tournament. Some people disagree with that for some reason. I don't know why, but uh I think they've already proven that they're the best team in the conference. So a loss in the big 10 tournament doesn't really hurt their, you know, for the, for the history books or what people think of them long-term. Um, so, but as a fan, like I said, I would want to win both just so that there was no doubt. Yeah. Uh, our boiler. I don't know why the chat is doing this to me today. Russ, uh, several players have commented on our pods that the players absolutely want to win the big 10 tournament as well as they should. As they should. So uh, it sounds like they're going to go all out for that. All right. Could guys, you imagine if on. they didn't, though? If they said, like, yeah, we actually want to, we want to lose and get out of here. Like, of, of course, like, <laughs> obviously they're going to say that. Right. <laughs> We've played too much basketball. We yeah. We're tired, much. man. Big 10 tournament doesn't matter. We want to get out of here. <laughs> that would be funny, though, if they did that. Uh, all right. Let's go to Ohio State Rutgers. <laughs> Uh, Ohio State wins 73 to 51. I got to be honest, going into this game, I was a little worried. Cliff Moria got auto benched early, I think, with like in the first three minutes or something like that. He picked up two early fouls, and uh, that really hindered the Rutgers defense for the rest of the game. Uh, they were commenting on the game that Rutgers had only hit like two shots, but they were only down seven, like halfway through the first half, which you know, it's kind of gross, but uh, Ohio State eventually pulls away and they proved to be too much for Rutgers. Rutgers still good defense, but couldn't last the entire game when uh, Ohio State has the offense that they have. So uh, Kent, this game, Rutgers, Ohio State, whichever way you want to take it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, once again, didn't see this game. So I'm going to go back to a text message I got from uh, somebody about this game. And it was from my friend Brad. I'll give him a shout out real quick. He said, and I quote, OSU is on fire. Sheesh. So that's that's what I got from that game. Didn't see anything else, so I don't want to take up any more time pretending like I watched this or I know what happened. I'll send it over to Lee. You guys can talk about what actually happened uh, today in the game. If that's yeah, okay. No, I think is that it was, okay? Yeah, yeah, no. I, okay. I accept. No, kid, please, I accept. please make up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do you want me to lie about the game? Like that it? You don't yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, go ahead, Lee. Uh, yeah, I think this was kind of just like an epitome of Rutgers season. You know, they play okay defense, but they struggle to score. So um, anytime you're giving up 70 plus when Rutgers is playing, then they're probably going to lose the game by double digits. Um, they just don't have a guy that can go really get a bucket. Um, and I think the Amorier foul trouble was, was definitely um, tough for Rutgers to overcome. Uh, like JR was saying, he picked up two in like the first – uh, three minutes and then uh, he picked up his third like 15 or 20 seconds into the second half so he didn't play a whole lot um, of time and uh, Akpara when he was in there certainly got the better of Amorie so um, I think he was really the difference um, and why Amorie didn't play much so um, Ohio State's peaking at the right time they win a couple games in the Big Ten tournament I don't know if they get in but they're certainly a lot closer to the bubble than they were um, a month ago probably. I wasn't planning to go this way, but it's popped into my mind now with Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper coming in 
to Rutgers. Obviously, Rutgers has had their offensive issues this season. I think, you know, yes, part of that is what you guys said with like, you know, they don't have a score. They don't have somebody to just go get them a bucket. Uh, yes, Cliff Moria is the star on this team, but he's much more a defensive star than an offensive star. Um, are we worried that it's less about the players and more Steve Peichel's offense? And perhaps Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey might not have the – I mean, obviously this team is going to be better on offense with those two guys on the team. They're just – they're better players than who Rutgers have now. However, are we – I mean, are we really thinking that this Rutgers team is going to have that much better of an offense to make them, you know, from a bottom-tier Big Ten team to somebody who's second or third tier uh, outside the middle? I don't know. I, I mean, I would like to think so because I think Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey are good players, but – I don't know. What do you think, Kent? I think they are definitely going to make an improvement for sure. But I personally, I think it's going to be a big jump next year, even with Steve Peichel. And I think he's, a, I think he's a good coach. Uh, you know, some right, people might not agree coach. with me on yeah. no, I'm what's that. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. I just don't know yeah. about the offense. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Just like the style of play and stuff. Yeah. I got you. Um, but I think that the two guys that you're talking about, Ace and uh, Dylan, I think that they're more than just like good players. Like these are like for Rutgers to have these two guys coming in at this in the same year. And from everything that I've seen on social media, be like really all about Rutgers and the Rutgers family and like really want to play for them. It's more than just like landing like a recruit that like, uh, you know, even like Ohio State or Michigan or Indiana would just land like a five star recruit. These guys like really want to be there. So I feel like um, they're going to take a big jump because they are better than just better. Than, they're better than just good players. They're very high level players coming in at the same time. And uh, I think that they want to do something special. And I think that they will next year. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, no, I mean, you look um, Amorie and Hyatt are seniors. I'm not sure if they still have eligibility, if they wanted to come back or not. But certainly, he can um, come back, but he's undecided. Um, so, but I definitely think you know, like you look Noah Fernandez. Like obviously, those guys are way, way, way better than than he is. Um, and then you got Jeremiah Williams. That's only a junior. He'll be coming back. He can go get a bucket when he wants. So, um, if Amoria comes back, and you got those two guys, I think they're significantly better than they were last year. Now, whether or not they defend at the same clip that they did this year, I don't know, but. If they come in next year and Pikeel has another down year where they don't score, then I think you probably have to start questioning whether or not he's a good coach or not, personally. Well, and I think Pikeel is one of those coaches that, like, he's going to get his guys to buy into defense. Like, I don't worry about defense when it comes to Rutgers because, one, I think that he gets athletic enough guys to play defense, and, two, like, he – like he he beats that into his players. He doesn't beat his players, but he you know, like he makes sure his players know like you're gonna play defense and that's gonna be a, a staple of this team. Which, I mean, it's not a bad way to build a team. But I like I said, I just I have concerns about the offense. So we'll see. But I I think I think personally, obviously, he's probably gonna get a longer leash just given that it is Rutgers. Obviously, they're way better than they have been in the last five years. You know, last two years. They made the tournament, if I'm not mistaken, or they were at least very close to making the tournament. So, you know, he certainly gets a little bit of a longer leash. And then having made the tournament, I think he buys himself a little bit more time. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely brought the program up from from what it was in the past. Um, so you guys just want to get to the Big Ten tournament stuff? Please. Yeah. Especially because all, right. all, all I heard from that is you said that Steve Peichel beats his players. That's what I got from that, JR. <laughs> that's not what I meant to Which... say, but that's probably what it sounded like I said. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me switch this stuff over really <laughs> fast. There we go. And then I'll bring this in. All right. So I'm using the old graphic from last year. So this is probably not what the graphic that it's going to look like. However, uh, using the uh, the website bball dot not nothing dot net, uh, assuming they are accurate. <laughs> they sound. Dude, accurate. They, they are definitely accurate for sure. All right. So anytime you have a pinwheel on the screen, then you know they're accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming they are accurate. These are this is what the Big Ten tournament is gonna look like. Obviously, it's huge that um, you know, Indiana beat Michigan State because that's you know what led to Indiana being here a sixth seed, and they're gonna play Nebraska, which is much better for them than uh playing um 
uh, Purdue or, or uh, playing Illinois or something <laughs> like that. So that's huge for Indiana. Ohio State gets bumped to the uh, the 10 seed. So instead of being the nine seed, they uh, they'll play Purdue. <clears throat> Instead of playing Purdue as the 10 seed, they'll play Illinois. I don't know if it really matters. I think both those teams are really good. But basically here, guys, I just want us to talk through basically the whole tournament and kind of get our predictions. We'll we'll agree on what we agree on and go from there. So let's start with Rutgers. Maryland, Lee, you're uh, you're the expert on the, uh, the Terrapins here. Do you think Maryland has what it takes to beat Rutgers in round one? Yeah, I think we do. Uh, you know, we went up there last week and or two weeks ago and dismantled them um i don't know my heart tells me to go with maryland but i could also see us losing the game so but i'm gonna i'm gonna say maryland just because i feel like i've got to you agree with that kent i do agree with that actually but i do i want to say though i i think this game is going to be a lot more (laughs) fun than people are going to realize a 12 13 game should be this is going to be a great game i mean to me all these games are going to be fun, but like this is going to be a really fun game to watch. But I'm going yeah, with I mean, Maryland. Yes, yes. I I go with Maryland too. I do have some <laughs> pause because they have only won one of their last five, and yes, that one was at Rutgers. Uh, and Rutgers only scored 46 on that one, so you know, struggling Rutgers offense versus really good Maryland defense. That's kind of what you get. But uh, my my whole thing at the end of the day is that you know Maryland has Jameer Young, and when it kind of comes to a stalemate there. You know, I, I go with, you know, whoever has the best player and the best player on that court will no doubt, no doubt be Jameer Young in my mind. So I go with him. All the right. only yeah. reason I would, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go, go one ahead. more statement on this. I'm sorry. The only reason that I would lean Rutgers at all in this game is because n- nobody's going to be there. Like it's going to be an empty <laughs> stadium. And I feel like a team that does favor like a, a defensive team, like we've been talking about with Rutgers. They probably would do better in a quiet, cold building like it's going to be Wednesday night than a team like Maryland who feeds off the energy of the crowd and going on runs, I think. But uh, all that being said, I still like Maryland. Sorry. You make it sound like well, one thing. I, <laughs> one, I will say, people don't give Maryland much credit, but we're a good defensive team. I think we're number seven uh, last I looked in Ken Palm for defensive. So I'm not saying I, I don't disagree with you. Maryland does tend to to feed off of runs, but I think Maryland's, they're not probably as good as Rutgers, but I think we're just as good probably, maybe. I don't know. No, I think it's dry. I think Cliff Moria is a better rim protector than Julian Reese, but Julian Reese is still good down there. I mean, it's not like he's, he's you know, anything to, you know, be upset about. So, uh, but I still agree. Uh, yeah, Maryland, I I think with Jimmy Young, that's the, that's the key piece. So, but who knows? If they, if, if Rutgers wins... You heard it here first. It's because of the cold, lifeless building that they were in, <laughs> and Rutgers just thrives in that. So <laughs> that's right. right. I'll be there, by the way. I'll be I'll be cheering them on. So like I'll try to bring some energy to the building. Didn't get the credentials I wanted from the Big Ten, and we could talk about that after the show, I guess. But uh, I'm still going to be covering it. I will be there live, and I'll be sending Lee updates as as the game progresses on Wednesday night. Please do. Very very good. Uh, all right, let's talk about the next one. Michigan, Michigan's awful. Penn State, Penn State has won three of their last five. They've actually beaten Illinois, uh, and they just beat Maryland, who we were talking about tonight. So uh, that's good for them. However, this Penn State team, they're kind of up and down. They don't have Kanye Clary, their leading scorer, but that doesn't look like it's affected them. I don't know if you guys agree with that. It, to me, it, it doesn't look like it's really hindered them all that much. But uh, Kent, let's start with you. Michigan, Penn State. You uh, you see an upset with Michigan, or you think it's going to be Penn State? Penn State, definitely. I do not see an up upset, an upset in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Definitely Penn State. You agree, Lee? Yeah. If if Penn State had shown, or correction, if Michigan had shown any bit of life these last couple of weeks, then maybe I think it could be close. But I, I just don't think they really want to be there. I think they're ready for the off season. So. Uh, Penn State for me as well. All right. Yeah. Uh, Fisherman says Michigan quit. I I hate to say a team has quit, but <laughs> it really it really does kind of look like that. Like Doug McDaniel's cares. <laughs> he wants to win, but I don't know if anybody else with a lot uh, without uh, Olivier Kamwa and all that stuff. I I just 
I don't know if I see it. So uh, this next one's actually probably going to be one of my favorite games of the tournament. It's going to be Minnesota, Michigan State. This is going to be a really fun game to watch. I think Minnesota is a, a good team. Obviously, we have some uh, Minnesota fans here in the comments. Appreciate you all being here. Michigan State. They, they are a good team by the numbers, but they've not been a good team lately. I put it out on Twitter earlier today. I don't think they're a tournament team. They shouldn't be a tournament team, but they'll get the recognition because it's Tom Izzo and he has the, the name brand and all that stuff. But uh, Lee, we'll push it to you here first. Minnesota, Michigan State, uh, what are your thoughts on this game? If you had to pick a winner, who would you pick? You know, I, I, I think this is kind of a toss-up for me. Um, but I think I lean more towards Michigan State just with Tyson Walker and A.J. Hogard, um, and I think they have more experience. Um, and I'm not saying that necessarily potentially matters in a second-round Big Ten game, but I think when it comes to it, if they need a bucket, I think Michigan State's more apt to go out and get a bucket than Minnesota would. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Michigan State in this one. I'm going to say that Michigan State is lifeless, and I don't like them, at least for this season. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I dislike them overall, but this season, I don't like that they have all the numbers and all the people believe in them and whatever. I, I, I know their own fan base doesn't really believe in them all that much. So at this point, uh, we I'm going to respectfully disagree and say that I think Michigan State doesn't have a front court. Malik Hall was, you know, he's, he's one of the only players that on that team that looks like I, not, I shouldn't say one of the only players. Him and Tyson Walker look like the only teams that are the only players on that team that look, you know, like they're going to make an, a play and make an impact in the game. I don't know what's happened to A.J. Hogard. He's kind of been inconsistent in the past, but he's just now not doing anything at all. It looks like and uh, Matty Sissoko, not a fan of him. Xavier Booker, I think they started him too late. And, and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, and then Jaden Akins, I don't know if I've even seen much of anything from him, notably in games lately. So uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say Minnesota. I think they're in Minneapolis. They they care a whole lot. Parker Fox is a, is a lightning bolt. I got to get that in there because I know Kent's going to mention, mention him. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to pick Minnesota. Kent, you're the tiebreaker. Who would you pick? Uh, I'll start by saying I'm picking Minnesota, so you can fix the graphic right now. I'll pick them, um, and okay. you can advance them. But I will say that Lee made some good points. Michigan State is a better team. They should win the game, but they're not going to because of everything that JR just said. Uh, they're a little lifeless right now. They're going to be in Minnesota, and if there's any semblance of a crowd whatsoever in that 11 a.m. game, they are going to all, everyone is going to be backing the Gophers uh, if they get a lead at all. And then I can just see Michigan State falling apart. But um, like I said, Lee, I agree with everything that you said, um, but I'm going to take Minnesota and I will be cheering for Minnesota too in their, uh, in their home state. And Parker Fox, like you said, obviously. And Joshua Ola Joseph just followed me yesterday on Twitter. So I'm definitely cheering for them. <laughs> all uh, I'm not... I'm not I'm not going to back off my uh, my Michigan State, but I, I will I will uh, admit that I did forget that it's in uh, Minneapolis, so I'll take that one. But I, I'm not going to I'm not going to recant my uh, my pick, so I don't look like a like a loser or a coward. <laughs> That's fair. No, That's no one would fair. think you're a coward, Lee. Uh, hey guys, <laughs> we have we have some SEC fans here, and they agree with me. Michigan State should not make the NCAA tournament. Thank you, Vols Fanatics Show, our our volunteer Tennessee volunteer mm -hmm. friends. Uh, yes, in Michigan State overrated. They shouldn't make the tournament. I'm with them. So, all right. Um, okay. This is this is a game. Maryland, Wisconsin. This is kind of a sneaky game. I think everybody, you know, is going to say right away, "Oh, Wisconsin wins this one." I don't know. I think Wisconsin. They. They have not been the same team lately. We were talking about that. Obviously, they lost to Purdue tonight, which, you know, that, you know, no harm, no foul there. Everybody loses to Purdue. It's fine, you know, except for Jake Diebler. Anyway, um, so it, it's not a big deal. However, like, Maryland's, I think Maryland's inspired. I think that they are going to play inspired. They go against Rutgers, they win that game. And I think they're going to feel like, hey, we have a bit of a road here. We can beat Northwestern and then, you know, see what happens with Purdue. I don't know. Uh, Kent, we'll start with you. I'm not giving a prediction either way right now, but uh, what are your thoughts? And if you had to give a prediction, what would you say? I'm going to take Wisconsin in this game because uh, simply 
be, even though I just said we've kind of been fooled by the type of team that they are from what they did at the beginning of the year, they're still the five seed for a reason. Uh, Maryland is the 12 seed for a reason, and that reason is wins and losses. So um, I'll take Wisconsin, the team that has got more wins than them, um, and a team that, going back to what Lee just said about Michigan State versus Minnesota, they are a better team than Maryland. And if they play like that, for 40 minutes, then they should advance into this tournament and play Northwestern in the next round. So I'll take Wisconsin in this one. What do you think, Lee? Well, uh, Kent said that Michigan State was the better team uh, against Minnesota, but he then went and picked Minnesota. So um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say Maryland because we have played. Like I mean, I look at all, any of these teams. No way. Any of these teams. We played all of these teams. Maryland is one and ten in five five point or less games. Okay, like we could we could easily be, you know, three or four games better than we are. Um, and I think on a neutral site, obviously, that gives us a little bit more of a chance. I'm solely going to say Maryland because I'm a Maryland fan, but I could see this going either way as well. Listen, all right, Michael Aston here. I can't find it. There it is. Michael Aston here. JR, I have to ask. It's down to Indiana State and Michigan State for the last spot in the tournament. Who gets your last spot? Even though Michigan State beat Indiana State, I still choose Indiana State over Michigan State in that scenario. Even though Wisconsin beat Maryland earlier this year at Wisconsin, by the way, by only four points, I'm picking Maryland. I think Maryland can yeah. do it. I, I'm going with Maryland. To beat the Badgers, I just I don't <laughs> believe in the Badgers at all. I call me a hater. No, I'm not. I don't think you're a hater, and I don't think either of you are necessarily wrong because of what we just said. All those things about Wisconsin, but uh, you know, that's what makes it. That's what makes this tournament great. Like we don't really know what's going to happen in these games. Well, and we have to pick. Like we have to pick some kind of Cinderella team, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, like somebody that's gonna play up above and and do something better than than maybe uh, what they've shown us so far this season. And I think it could be Maryland. I think you know Deshaun uh, Deshaun Harris Smith. He's a little bit older. Uh, he's got some more experience on his side. Jameer Young. It's his last time. Like he knows it. Uh, Julian Reed. Like I think that uh, this team they just they have some pieces together, and I think that if they put it together. They can beat a struggling team like Wisconsin, so I'm going to pick them. All right. Uh, okay, so Ohio State, Iowa. I'll just say it first. I'm going to pick Ohio State to win this one. I think Iowa has a really good offense. However, I do think that Ohio State, their offense can keep up with them enough, and I think Ohio State's playing good enough defense right now that they'll be able to stop Iowa enough to win this one. Uh, Lee, we'll go to you first. Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I'm going to go with who's hot and who's not. I'm going to pick Ohio State. I think um, they're putting their pieces together right now, and Iowa just hasn't been playing well recently. So I think Ohio State continues as well. We got two double-digit seeds into the uh, into uh, Friday. It's kind of crazy because, like, both of these teams, Ohio State and Iowa, they both need at least one win in the Big Ten tournament to probably get into the NCAA tournament. I mean, like, <laughs> one win for Iowa would be nice. Um, I think that they still have a chance to get in, but I don't think Ohio State has a chance to get into the tournament unless they win this first game here. So, uh, big opportunity for them, but I think their back has been against the wall for, for a long time, and I think they're going to make it happen. Kent, you think you're with us, or are you going to choose uh, Tony Perkins and the Hawkeyes? No, I know Tony's Tony is watching right now. So I, I'm sorry, Tony, but I am going to pick the Buckeyes um, for everything that they listen. Ohio State wouldn't be a 10 seed if Chris Holtman didn't start the season as the coach this year. Th that's how I feel. I feel like that they would have been a higher seed to begin with if Diebler was there all year. So um, just because it's a, a 10 versus a seven matchup, um, no, no, Ohio State's playing better right now and i'm definitely picking them to win that game i'm right with you guys on this all right i'm glad i'm glad the buckeyes are getting some love uh and i appreciate you guys whether you're uh, actually believe that or you're just uh trying to make me happy either way i appreciate it so uh all right I believe I, it, guys baby. i believe it. i gotta be honest day two here i think that has some of my favorite games of of everything penn state indiana here like I, like this is a really good backcourt for Penn State with kind of a struggling front court. I wouldn't say it's like a bad front court, but 
you know, they're compared to other front courts in the Big Ten, they're struggling. But, uh, you know, IU has a really, <laughs> a really bad backcourt, but they have a really good front court. So it's kind of like good on bad, bad on good here in a few different ways. I don't, to be honest, I don't really know which way I'm going to go. I lean Indiana, but just because they're kind of hot with that Michigan state win, but uh, I'm not really confident in it. Kent, what do you think? I'm confident. I do like Indiana a lot because of this reason only they just beat Michigan state. I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but it goes January, February, Izzo, April, May, June, July. That's how it goes on the calendar. Have you guys heard that? And it is Izzo right now. And they just beat Michigan state in the month of Izzo. Can you guys believe that? That's how hot they are right now. So I'll take Indiana, um, and uh, I think they win this game convincingly, actually. I think that they're going to uh, uh, win this game going away against Penn State. Penn State's not ready for them at the moment. They might be next year, but not right now. I like Indiana a lot in this game. Wow. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Khalil Ware and um, Malik Renu are far superior to um, Quidus Wahab. And I think uh, Xavier Johnson does enough to control Ace Baldwin. I mean, Xavier Johnson is very good defensively. Um, so I, I lean Indiana, and I think they could win it probably by double digits if they play well. Fisherman agrees with you. He says Indiana big. So uh, Fisherman, known he, he knows ball. Fisherman knows ball. <laughs> Known ball knower, Fisherman. Known ball he needs to put that in his bio. He needs to put that in his bio. I know ball. Yeah, for sure. By the way, Fisherman, like he's like, he has to win commenter of the year on this show, right? <laughs> well, honestly, him and when Michael, I was, him and Michael, right? When I was, yeah, him and Mike, Michael greets everybody in the chat, which I appreciate. Michael, he's, Michael's he's, the nicest. Yeah, he's the best. I, I love, I love the, whenever Michael's in the chat. Um, no, I, I like honestly, when we were talking, when I was thinking about the games to recap here, I was thinking, man, I should probably recap the Michigan State Indiana game. I feel like that's gonna be a really big game. But in my mind, I said, no, Fisherman is going to want us to talk about Ohio State. And Fisherman is always here. <laughs> we don't have any IU fans other than Burke. Sorry, often daunted. I know you're in there. But uh, but <laughs> but we don't have very many IU fans. We don't have a ton of Michigan State fans. So to me, I'm like, give Fisherman what he wants because he's in here and we appreciate him. So, uh, all right, we'll get off that. I'll so tell long. you what. I'll tell you what. I don't know if, uh, if Kent's familiar, but JR knows that. Each year on on our podcast, we do uh, a, a award ceremony similar to the ESPYS, but we call it the Testies. Yes, and yes. Uh, we'll we'll make we'll make a special uh, category this year for the best Big Ten huddle commenter, and uh, Fisherman and Michael are in it. And if you guys have any other people you'd like to throw in there, we'll uh, we'll add it in. I'll text the boys right now. I'll put it down so we make sure we have that okay. in in the episode yeah. this year. I see a lot of people know. today like trying to make a late push for this type of award show. Like just a bunch of people jumping in here today. Like we, we yeah. know who's been here for a long time. We see you, Michael. I, we see you, Fisherman. Michael's madness. IU fan checking in. Thank <laughs> you, Michael, for letting us know. Even like that's that's what I need to start telling people. Like, even if you don't comment a whole bunch, like tell us in the chat who you are because I really do try to pick games that like people who watch our show will care about. So uh knowing that we do have at least one IU fan now, that will uh <laughs> That will affect me. So, Michael, I apologize for not talking about the Indiana-Michigan State game. I just didn't know you existed. But <laughs> I, that was probably not a great way of putting it. Sorry. Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's just talk about Indiana again to make up for it. So we have Indiana, Nebraska. Uh, guys, I got to be honest. I'm a little bit locked on this one, too. Nebraska, really, really good team. Uh, a hot team however they're not at home and that makes a difference i feel like when nebraska doesn't have all the fans behind them they're gonna have these minnesota fans there i mean will nebraska's fans travel to minneapolis for this one i hope so i'm sure. sitting in their I section so. that's where i'm they sitting. i'm with the nebraska section so i hope they're there and we're gonna party baby nebraska fans let's go we're gonna we're gonna have a big time there that week this week yeah so it's not harvesting ready? season it's not harvesting season in Nebraska, so they haven't got anything else on their plate, so they'll be there. Um, does that mean you have to root for Nebraska in this game then, Kent? Um, no, but I probably will just because I'm scared and I don't want to get beat up by anybody while I'm in Minneapolis. <laughs> so I'll just be like, yay, 
go Nebraska. I'll wear like a Nebraska shirt for sure. Um, and cheer for them for this game. But that being said, if we're going to make a pick, are we going to move back up the bracket here, JR? I'm going to actually pick Indiana in this game for the reason that you said Nebraska is not at home. And uh, like I said, I like Indiana a lot right now. I think that they're hot. And I think they're a type of team that could make a little bit of a run in this tournament. So I'll take Indiana in this game. I don't know if you were um, taking picks right now, but I'm picking. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I So I have to apologize to Michael Madness. Uh, although I am glad that you're here, uh, I am going to end up taking Nebraska in this one. I am a firm believer that Nebraska is entirely – like when I was making power rankings at the beginning of the year, I was at, at one point like power ranking Nebraska at home versus Nebraska away. Uh, so I do think they're a different team at home. However – I, I think Nebraska wins this one. I think that Rank Mast is uh, is a really, really good player. And I think if Kasai Tominaga gets hot. And, and also, I've been talking about his shooting all year long. Tominaga is a fantastic cutter. I watched that Michigan game today and, and just like it dawned on me. I was like, why do I not give this guy credit for something other than shooting? Like he he does a very good job of getting cuts. And even if when he doesn't, um, when he doesn't get the ball on those cuts, like he's, he's still keeping the, the defender guarding the the player accountable for that as well. So um, I'm going to go with Nebraska. It's not by much. I don't feel super confident in it, but I think Nebraska gets it done. Lee, you are the tiebreaker here. Uh, will you side with the Cornhuskers or the Hoosiers? Well, Ken, I'm just going to tell you, just wear a red shirt that game and you're completely fine. Depending on there you know you how dark or how light it is, you're good. Um, however, I am going to go with Nebraska. On this game, I think it will be close, but I think Tom and Aga and Mast get it done, and they're playing very well this year. You know, you said they're not at home, but they're not quite on the road. It is a neutral site, um, so I'll give them the slight edge in this one. Let me. Yeah, and, I just uh, want to make one more point about this game before we read this comment, Jr. If that's okay, there is something to be said about and Jr. You know this better than anyone because this happened to Ohio State last year. Teams that have already played on that court and have been in that building, I think, have an advantage if the matchup is close. And I do think that the matchup is close in this game. It's close enough for Indiana. I think that the fact that they have played the night before against either Penn State or Michigan, definitely Penn State, the fact that they have one game under their belt going into that Friday game against Nebraska is going to serve them well. And I really think that's what the advantage is in this game. I'm not saying that Indiana is going to go in and blow out Nebraska. I'm definitely not saying that. I, I think Nebraska is a good team. I think there's a slight advantage because they're playing the day before and they have that uh, familiar, uh, however you want to say it, they're familiar with the building and they've already played there and they've already shot on those rims and all that good stuff. So that's what gives them the edge in this game. I mean, Billy Bob put it in there. Nebraska beat Indiana at Assembly Hall. I mean, does that change it at all, Kent? Did you remember that? Because I didn't. I'm glad Billy Bob put that in there. But I do remember now uh, that he said that, that situation. Does that change it for you at all, Kent? Or are you still, uh, you still picking the Hoosiers? I'm still picking the Hoosiers. All right. I'm just going to stand by it and just be a uh, knucklehead about it. There's no nothing that's going to change my <laughs> mind about it at this point. That is a very good point by Billy Bob, though. And I did not remember that. For sure did not remember that. We appreciate you, Billy Bob. All right. Uh, okay. So Ohio State, Illinois, guys, I just decided. Um, so I'm just going to be a complete homer this episode, and I'm just going to pick Ohio State no matter who they play. So uh, my pick is Ohio State. Um, Lee, why don't you go first? Do you think uh, Illinois gets it done, or do you think the hot Buckeyes uh, move on? As much as I wish I could side with you on this one, JR, I think their magical run comes to an end. But I think they did I enough. Know. As ours has said, you know, as we've put so far that uh, they make the Big Ten tournament. But I think just Illinois is too good. Um, and I think ultimately they're they're the better team. So I think they're going to win. You mean Ohio State will make the NCAA tournament? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. You said make the Big Ten tournament. And I was like, wait. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Yes. Yes. As we've seen, they did. They did, in fact, make the Big Ten tournament this year. <laughs> Hey, next year, that's going to be a real conversation, though, because some teams are not going to make it next year. So yeah. we have to get used to saying that. All right, Kent, break the tiebreaker for us. Uh, you you with the hot Buckeyes, or are you uh, going with the uh, fight in the Lion Eye? I will go with Illinois. 
Uh, and I will uh, let my sure. mentions not be full all night from all the Illinois fans <laughs> that potentially are watching this. There's no shot I'm picking Ohio State against Illinois in this game. I just said that the team that played the night before has a slight advantage because they just played on that rim. If the matchup is close, and unfortunately in this game, I do not think that this matchup is close enough for it to make a difference. Illinois advances. Wow. A couple I'm Buckeye sorry. haters next to me. That's fine. I'm sorry, Dale. <laughs> All right. I will not be picking Maryland now that Lee picked against Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously, Kent, we'll let you uh, go first here. Northwestern and Maryland. Uh, Maryland will be on the court for, what is that, two days. So uh, add an advantage for them. Do you think uh, – well, you didn't think Maryland's going to get it done before, so you think it's Northwestern, right? Yeah, I think Northwestern wins this game uh, regardless of who it is, to be honest. If it's Wisconsin or Maryland or Rutgers, whoever is in this game, I think that Northwestern uh, is going to win it. Now, here's what I'll say about Northwestern, though. They need – at least one person to get healthy, whether it's Langborg or I don't know. Have you heard about Nicholson? Is he going to, I, I thought he was supposed to be reevaluated. Is he out for the year now? Like somebody has uh, to get healthy. On this no, team. Langborg just, is back. It's oh, Langborg is back. Okay. Okay. Did yeah. he play against Michigan state? Langborg did. Yes. Okay. Well, I didn't know that, but I don't, I, I think he was limited or something like that. I don't, I don't think he was like his normal self anyway well either way i'm taking uh northwestern to advance in in this game uh regardless of who it's against any of those three teams uh before them i'm taking the wildcats yes all right lee uh will you concede and take the wildcats or uh are you still uh faithful in your terrapins i'm simply if you wouldn't have picked ohio state i probably would have taken northwestern but since you told me it was okay i'm just gonna i, I i'm gonna say maryland because once again we did play them close at Northwestern. So, uh, you know, if we knock down shots, I think there's a chance, but um, I, I'm going to say Maryland just, just because you showed me it was okay to, to pick Ohio state in them. So I'm going to say Maryland. You think I, if I you hit more shots than them, you guys are going to win? No. Well, obviously, obviously, <laughs> but obviously Maryland's Maryland's Achilles heel has been the inability to hit shots from outside. I so, you. you know, I'm just, I'm that's, just making, I'm, I'm, I'm just making everybody. So, <laughs> I'm in a good mood tonight. I feel like I can uh, poke some fun right now. <laughs> You're good. Kingdom, this is such a biased podcast, low key. And all. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're having Hold on, fun. This is the same dude that just said I don't know ball because I didn't pick his team. Because <laughs> he's a Nebraska fan. That dude just said that in the comments. I think. We're just having fun, Bears Kingdom. Uh, so I, I, I do like realistically looking at this, I do think that Maryland does have a chance because Northwestern does have some guys injured. However, I do think that boo is going to be too much for Maryland. I don't think that it's like, he's going to be too much because he's going to outplay Jameer young to that level. However, I just don't think that Jameer young has enough help around him for, uh, for to be able to contain Boo and some of the other things that are going on with with uh, Northwestern. I think Langborg is going to be huge for him playing the way that he is. Uh, I'm going to pick Northwestern, but I would not be surprised at all if Maryland wins. And also, too, like Maryland is going to be super tired. If this does end up happening, Maryland's going to be super yeah. tired. It happened last year with Ohio State. Like Eventually, you just run out of gas, especially for a team in Maryland that plays Jameer Young nearly 40 minutes a night. Like If that dude has to play 40 minutes a night, three nights in a row, like – I'm I'm a huge yeah. Jameer Young fan, but it's just going to be too much in my mind. Yeah, no, I agree. I can see that point. And if Martinelli continues to play well, then they're. I think Northwestern's got a, a run in them, so I can yep. see that. Yep, I agree. All right, uh, Minnesota Purdue. We uh, we love the Gophers, Kent. Uh, we we uh, you know have a have a special place in our heart for them but the uh, the boilermakers are very good and zach Eady is very scary um do you have any hope for minnesota here or do you think purdue's gonna win it i think purdue's gonna win it that's just a tough draw for the quote-unquote home team in this tournament but yeah purdue's definitely gonna win that game yeah i think so too lee any other thoughts yeah no, i feel bad I, I for think purdue. purdue's like <laughs> I don't think we talk about them very much because at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, Purdue's very good. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. 
I think Sometimes if you're for the Big Ten, you actually want Michigan State to win that first game because Michigan State versus Purdue looks a little bit better, you know, from a TV rating That's standpoint, true. I think, than Minnesota versus Purdue. But, uh, you know. Hopefully that's not the case, though. I want Minnesota to win that first one. Alibaba has hope. Maybe Zach Eadie fouls out. That's my only hope. Hey, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, it could happen. We'll see. Maybe Parker Fox um, hits uh, 15 three-pointers. That could happen, too. Anything could happen in that game. I believe in Parker Fox. I do, too. He's the truth. <clears throat> my boy. Uh, yeah, I think, honestly, if, uh, if Zach Eadie fouls out, I think I'd still – in the limited yeah. time that he would get and Braden Smith. Uh, it wouldn't be by much, but I think I would still pick Purdue. Uh, I think Minnesota would have a, a good chance though. So, all right. Uh, so here we go. We have picked all of uh, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four here. So uh, obviously we don't have any Cinderella's or anything like that. We'll see if that actually comes true, but uh, we'll start with Purdue Northwestern. Northwestern has beaten Purdue this year. They've also lost to Purdue, but it was also a very close game. Uh, I remember Chris Collins getting ejected and hugging Zach Eady on the way out. Uh, <laughs> over under uh, a half a hug for Chris Collins in this game, I guess, would be a good bet. But, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, Northwestern is just, they're too hobbled. And even though Boo Boo is very good and Brian Langborg will be able to shoot well enough, I still think it's, uh, I still think it's Purdue's game. Lee, what do you think? Yeah, I just think, like you said, Northwestern just has a, a, a couple key pieces that are a little bit hobbled and produce the superior team. So I, I think Purdue Purdue wins, unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say that. <laughs> Kit, what do you think? Yeah, I think Purdue wins this game too. And I would be looking, if this is the matchup uh, next Saturday, I would be looking for Purdue to get out and run simply for the fact that we just talked about Northwestern has so many guys injured. Their bench is a little bit depleted at this point. Um, I do like Blake Smith, though. He's a new guy that just showed up for Northwestern. He's a guy that I'm going to be keeping an eye on for the next few years, uh, sophomore for Northwestern. But I think that what I'm trying to say to make something interesting about this game is that I think there's going to be a lot of fast break points for Purdue available in this game because Northwestern is going to try to slow it down and have as few as possessions as possible like they did against Michigan State the other night. And uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do it against Purdue. They're going to get up and down and score a lot in this game. Yeah, they'll be able to to be out and running. Uh, Dave says Northwestern wins with defense. Um, Dave, I would love it if you were right. That would be a, a fun <laughs> upset. But um, I'm glad you have faith, Dave, unfortunately. I don't think I have the faith that that will happen. Uh, all right. So Illinois and Nebraska here, guys. Uh, I, I I could go either way on this one. I will eventually have to make a pick, but I'm going to uh, let Kent make his pick first to see if I don't have to make a pick, see if you and Lee agree. Uh, but Kent, what are your thoughts on Illinois and the Cornhuskers? I mean, if that is the if that is the semifinal game on Saturday night, I mean, what a game we're going to be treated to. That's going to be fun. These two teams, I mean, these just really fun offenses to watch, both of them, for different reasons. But uh, I think I'm going to lean uh, Illinois in this game. I know that's so simple to say because they are the two seed and it's like <laughs> just chalk throughout the bracket. But um, I already said I thought Indiana could beat Nebraska in the game before that, so there's no way I can in good faith uh, say that Nebraska would advance against a team like Illinois. So I'll take Illinois in this game. Now, if you... If you do remember, Nebraska did take Illinois to overtime and only lost by three in Champaign. Nebraska wasn't even at home. So uh, I'm not trying to sway you here, Kent, but I am saying, you know, Nebraska was able to take it to him. I think did they have Ter they did have Shannon Jr. in that game, I think. Let me check the box score really fast, but I think they had Shannon. Yeah, I mean, they had Terrence Shannon Jr. in that game. Uh, Coleman Hawkins, leading scorer with 20 points. So... Uh, I'm not trying to sway you here, Kent. But, hey, I, uh, I just want to remind everybody, like, before I get, like, like eaten up by Nebraska fans, I'm sitting in the Nebraska section all <laughs> session for the Big Ten tournament. I'm with Nebraska fans. So I, I, I like Nebraska. I'm a big Nebraska supporter, literally. I'm going to be in the lower bowl with the Nebraska fans cheering on Nebraska. I just, you know. I also try to be uh, unbiased, even though we just got called biased on the show. 
Um, <laughs> I try to be unbiased, so I'm going to say that I think the better team is Illinois, and I think they're going to win this game. I love you, Nebraska. I'll have my Cornhusker shirt on for this game. You did I did not do that because, because the tickets, tickets were super I'm a, Dude, <laughs> who is this guy, man? I he called you uh, biased and cheap. cheap. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. I love it. They weren't cheaper. They weren't cheaper. <laughs> I love it. I love that Bears are always here sticking up for his team. Uh, <laughs> no, I – I love when people get, come in here and stick up for their team. Uh, my the only thing I don't like is when they came in and they told me I was, uh, you know, a terrible person and that there was no way I had a family. That was the only comment that I was like, eh, bit much. <laughs> it's like, yeah. all right, maybe don't take the personal attacks, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lee, do you agree that it's Illinois' game, uh, or are you going to side with the uh, rabid Cornhusker fans in the chat? Uh, well, you know, I want to point one thing out. We're getting called biased, but anytime we talk crap on Nebraska, we get, uh, we get hated on. So there's, there maybe is a little bit of bias on, on that part as well. Oh. Um, but no, nah, I mean, I'm just saying I, I, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I enjoy, we are the big banter network. So banter is in our name. So, uh, I enjoy it, but I think ultimately Illinois is just too much. They're a matchup nightmare for both for most teams. Um, again, I think Nebraska is a good team. I think they're going to have win a couple of games in the NCAA tournament, but I think that Illinois is going to win this one. Um, all right, so I'll just pick Nebraska since it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll go with Nebraska. And- oh, they just trying to see you, face. They just say, you, face, you, face Ken. Don't do Unreal. Don't be that guy. Uh, no, if I if I had That's to weak, give a legitimate, dude. if I had to give a legitimate defense, I would say Nebraska <laughs> did take it to Illinois in Champaign. I don't think that you know Illinois is just like the auto win like Purdue can be, uh, especially against Northwestern with how hobbled they are. Um, if I had to pick like an actual winner, I I probably would lean more toward Illinois. However, again, if Nebraska wins this game, it would not surprise me. At all, I think that Nebraska has everything you need to beat Illinois. They just need the shooting in that game to make it happen. Which it's not. It's it's not like that for every team. It's just you know, uh, shooting can come and go uh, with any team. And if Nebraska is hitting at a high rate, they can win. But if I had to make the logical choice, the logical choice probably would be Illinois. But uh, but it would be kind of fun to see Nebraska play in the Big Ten championship. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> it'd be really fun because I'm sitting in the Nebraska section. Let's Thank not you, forget Sonny. that, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to give proper representation for every fan base here. All right. I'm just, I'm trying to help everybody out. All right. I'll move Bear, on. Bears Kingdom, Bears Kingdom going to have, like, if he's at the tournament, he's just going to plaster Kent's face amongst uh, Nebraska Twitter just so they throw stuff at you if, if uh, you're rooting against Nebraska. If he's coming, he's going to be sitting right next to me because he's a Nebraska <laughs> fan, and I'm in the Nebraska section. He's going to have to be friends with me. Like, we're going to be in the same row. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Uh, Purdue and Illinois, how did we get to this point? Uh, it felt like just, you know, a few days ago, they were such good friends and kumbaya together. Uh, <coughs> and now they're in the Big Ten Championship again. And our bracket, obviously, Purdue has, uh, you know, gotten gotten Illinois here twice on a neutral site. Do we see anything different, or uh, do we think the Boilermakers are going to win this one out? Lee, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think Illinois can keep it close, but I think Purdue is going to win it personally. Yeah, uh, Kent, what do you think? I am going to pick Illinois to win oh. this one. Yeah, I just think that um, just to say something different other than just Purdue's going to walk right through. And I think that there's something to be said about a team that, like I like I mentioned about Illinois earlier um, in the show, I think that they have something to prove. And this is a big opportunity to prove to everybody that they are the – at the elite top tier of the Big Ten, just like Purdue. They're not just uh, a whole tier down. So I'll take Illinois to win. Um, obviously, it's just easy to say that Purdue's going to win. They've already won the conference this year, and 
um, kind of walk through it. So it's easy to say they'll do the same thing in the tournament, but that's what makes March great. Like crazy things happen. And I think that Illinois played Purdue pretty good. Uh, I mean, I know they ended up losing by more than they'd like to, but um, yeah, they got something to prove in this game. So I'd like, uh, maybe they can win this one. So I'll pick, I'll pick Illinois for the fun. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it is fun to pick Illinois. However, I do think that Purdue is going to win this one. Uh, I do think that at a certain point, Purdue is just kind of a matchup nightmare for Illinois. They're able to uh, slow them down and really not allow them to play the type of game that they want to play. Oh, that was really anticlimactic. It made the font really, really small. <laughs> <laughs> that stinks. I thought it was gonna be like this big fun thing where it's like, oh, no, Purdue, but no, it made the font really small. That stinks. We'll have to enlarge it here. Uh, but no, at the end of the day, I do think I do think Purdue probably probably wins this one. Uh, but I again, I would not be surprised to see Illinois win if they're able to uh, to make it happen. So, all right, um, that's all I got. You guys have any more thoughts on the? Uh, the uh, Big Ten tournament or anything like that? Uh, no, the only thing I've got to is, yeah, I, I enjoy looking forward to uh, this weekend, although it means that the end of college about ba- college basketball season is coming to an end. This is the my favorite time of the year. So looking forward to it and the uh, next week, couple weeks after it for the NCAAs. Yeah, Kent, what do you think? I'm just really excited. Like, I uh, flight takes off on Wednesday morning, so I'm just really excited about the whole week. I get to stay all the way until the end of the championship. This year, I had to leave uh, last year on Saturday night, so I missed the championship. So, just very excited for the whole week. The Big Ten tournament for people who haven't been before is a awesome experience for anybody who's in love with basketball, like I am, because there's former players just in the concourse losing teams just are hanging out in the stand so you can go and talk to players and coaches and um it's just like a really fun like who's who of basketball in the big 10 now this year i'm not sure if it'll be that big because it's in minneapolis instead of chicago like it was was last year but uh yeah just a really fun experience all around so i'm excited to get there and uh and uh embrace myself in the minnesota culture and uh all 13 of these games Watch every single one of them on bated breath and cover it like only I can, even without the Big Ten's credentials that they denied from me. <laughs> don't they know who you are, Kent? Um, they don't. They don't have a clue. No, they don't. Uh, Vols Fanatics, best time of the year of March. The madness is real. Yes, I make sure I have enough TVs and uh, enough laptops and everything every year to watch as many games as possible. There, there is not, although I am more of a football fan than a basketball fan, there is not a better time of the year to watch sports than, than March Madness, in my mind. So, um, Philip says, shows every night for the tournament. Yes. So, uh, Kent will not be with us because Kent, like he said, is going to the uh, Nebraska section and uh, going to be possibly <laughs> cheering on Nebraska. We'll see what happens. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we will be having a show every single night. I'm going to try and be joined by the winners each night. Uh, We'll see how that works out, uh, people scheduling and stuff like that. However, we will have a show, at least me and one other person, each night to talk about the games that happened. And then we'll probably talk about previews for the next games as well. When it gets into like day two, though, there's going to be like four games to recap and four games to preview. So it'll be one of those things where it's like, you know, we'll probably talk about some games and maybe not some others, or maybe just talk about the games people in the comments talking about. So uh, we are going to try and go live at least uh, no longer than 15 minutes after the last game ends. So we'll try to be on here right away after the last game ends each night and uh, be here to talk about it. And uh, we'll talk and we'll get your comments as well and just have a big, fun, big 10 party. It's gonna I be plan on being here. I plan on being here both nights at Maryland win, so I'm looking forward to it, JR. I, I want you here every night, Lee. If Maryland now, keeps if, winning and winning. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If Maryland keeps winning, I will continue to come on. How about that? I'll make you a deal. I love that. Uh, that would be fantastic. So, uh, Kent, are you going to be recording videos for us or anything like that that you're going to give us updates? You said something about that when you were uh, – when you were talking about, yeah, are you doing anything? I'm going to be posting constantly throughout the week, but, um, I'm going to try to do a Twitter. 
bases every night, like after the games are over as well. Kind of hopefully not at the same time as you because we have to get back to our hotel. So yours will probably be over by that time. But I'd like to have anybody that wants to come on, uh, come join the Twitter spaces and give their thoughts on the games that happened that day. And we'll be discussing what we saw live in the stadium as well. So should be a fun time. C come follow uh, Casual Big Ten on Twitter to be involved in those. Sounds great. All right. Uh, appreciate everybody for being here. Lee, you want to tell people where they can find uh, Turtlehead at? Yeah, we're at uh, on X and Instagram at Turtleheads Talk. Um, yeah, we're trying to get our followers up. We just got over 500, so we've only been on there for about a year. So we're trying to build that as much as we can. We're putting out as much content. So please give us a follow. Um, and we're just as biased on there as we are on here. So. <laughs> Great. Love it. Uh, Kent, anything other than Casual Big Ten you want to put out there? Nope. Just on Twitter, at Casual Big Ten. Come find me and um, post some stuff every day. Oh, final four of the uh, hypothetical two-on-two -two tournament is uh, taking place this week, by the way. Mon tomorrow, I think, is the games, right? Is that what I tweeted out? Yeah. I think, I think so. that's what I did. It's your thing, dude. <laughs> dude. Listen, just because I tweeted it out doesn't mean I have to keep track of it, too. Like That's not my job. <laughs> That's I have hilarious. to go back and read it and see what I said I was going to do, and then maybe I'll follow through on it. We'll see. That's no, it'll be tomorrow, though. The, the, the final four games are tomorrow, and then the championships is on uh, Wednesday. Sounds good. For the fake All basketball right. tournament that I put on Twitter, by the way. I was going to say, not tournament. the real basketball tournament. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. We appreciate it. Have a good night. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday night for the recap of the first night of the Big Ten Basketball Tournament. See you then. Bye.